welcome to this podcast of the Hudson River Presbytery. Uh, my name is Dale Southorn. I'm the moderator of the Presbytery this year and pastor of the Mount Kisco uh, Presbyterian Church just up the road from uh, the P Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. And you're going to meet uh, the pastor of that church and uh, a friend of mine, uh, Reverend Dr. Debbie Bronkema. And uh, Debbie can tell her you more about herself in a few moments, but we wanted to spend some time with Debbie and learn from her experience with what we call new worshiping communities. And for some of you, maybe that's a new term. Maybe you haven't heard of that, but we really are we're wanting to develop uh, our, our support of new worshiping communities here in Hudson River Presbytery. And uh, the project coming out of the Pleasantville Presbyterian Church called Connect Not Faith is one really stunning example of how creative congregations can get as they try to reach new folks. I just want to say a word about my friend and colleague Debbie. She is uh, an amazing um, member of our presbytery and a leader in many aspects, uh, but her, I just don't know how she gets it all done. <laughs> She's a, a wife and a mother, and as, as I shared with her uh, in this past year of respected moms uh, so much, getting through this past year with a job and keeping your kids on task in school and everything going on in our lives, but um, also a, a published author and conference speaker and pastor to not one, but two uh, faith communities, as you will hear. And so Debbie, welcome to our podcast. I look forward to uh, getting to know you better and learning more about connect.faith. So why don't you take a moment and introduce yourself to our listeners. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to be with you all today. Um, so I am the pastor of Pleasantville Presbyterian Church and have been for, I think it's 14 years now, which is wow. amazing. And several years ago, we started this new worshiping community called Connect That Faith. And that has been really a joyous and creative way to engage in ministry today. And so I'm also the worship leader of that community, along with a, a great team there as well. And then, like you said, I'm my husband, John, is a big part of all parts of my life, in turn, also in, engaged in helping with ministry, no matter what I'm doing. He is a direct care provider and went to seminary as well. And then I have four children from 16 to 20 three and 11 months, I think at this point. And they're doing well through this crazy pandemic time. Mm. Wonderful and, and uh, exciting to hear a little bit about your, your kids. We could take more time. They're doing some really interesting things, <laughs> including one in ministry. Yes. And, uh, that's, and they're all in ministry. They, they see them participating with, with connect.faith in various ways. Um, Debbie, why don't we take a moment to just take a step back and talk about new worshiping communities in a general way. And from your sense, what, what is a new worshiping community? We traditionally in the Presbyterian Church used a term called new church development to talk about the Presbytery's role. Often it was at the Presbytery level of finding property and finding an organizing pastor and grabbing some folks to get a church started in a new community and so on. Um, we're trying to work with some new ways of doing that. And so if you'd explain your understanding of new worshiping communities. Sure. So it's kind of getting outside the definition of building and space and looking at new ways to be church in the world today. So it it is um, it's meeting people where they are instead of expecting that they're going to come where we are. There are a lot of different models out there. And if you look at the website for the Peace USA, there's some really interesting stories and creative ways that people have tried to engage folks that are outside of their regular community. Um, there's one skateboard ministry that I read about. <laughs> it's just a, it's really an interesting time to think about where are people now. Even in the time that I've been a pastor, the the givenness of church has really changed. Um, I remember somebody saying, oh, I'd like to, to come to your church sometime. What day does it happen on? Hmm. And I thought, oh, wow, we have really changed that people, <laughs> they don't have, they had no idea. Well, I work during the week 
do you ever have it on the weekend? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> I think it, part of the new worshiping community change in definition is trying to understand who the church really is in the world now and how do we meet people where they are? So oh, that's a great definition, Debbie. And you mentioned the denomination has, the General Assembly has uh, established a thousand and one worshiping communities with the goal from a number of years ago of establishing a thousand and one of these, just standing <laughs> some really creative things happening around the country and some uh, resources from the denomination, both staff and, and some financial resources to help new worshiping communities get started. But your specific uh, project, uh, and, and maybe project isn't the right word, um, your new uh, faith community coming out of uh, PPC is connect.faith. And first of all, I just want to ask you, I'm so naive about uh, the technical side. How did you get dot faith instead of dot com dot org dot whatever? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, one of the real benefits that we've had since the beginning is that um, somebody that was my colleague and was pretty active in the presbytery here, Brian Barden, he was a Christian educator and youth director. Mm -hmm. He's really sort of ahead of himself on tech issues. And when we started this, he uh, was a big part of the beginning of the team and he knew that that existed. So yeah. when we began to talk about what would the name be, he threw that into the mix and we jumped at the dot faith and then figured out what the first word was, so. Excellent, it says it all. It's really a great name and a great handle and it, it is a website, you go straight there folks, connect connect.faith and it'll take you right there. And what an amazing website. Mm -hmm. I've shared with Thank Debbie you. that I've spent some time on with on that over the last uh, months and again recently just uh, in preparation for today and I could spend a lot of time on your website. <laughs> Thank the you. different Thank sections you. from interviews uh, with in interesting people and art gallery and music. So describe connect.faith. Uh, it's not just a website. It's much more than a website. No, it's so it it started with the sense that we wanted to connect with people who were having trouble connecting with congregations where they were for a variety of reasons. Some because they worked on Sunday and there was no other option. Some because their church had left the denomination and they didn't know where to go. Some their church had pushed them out for asking too many questions. We even had somebody that got connected with us because their church voted not to do social justice. And that was such a shocking thing to them that they started to proactively ask their friends, where do I find a church that will do this? So at the same time that we were hearing this from Pleasantville and trying to put things online and, and get more active online, we began to realize, well, this isn't really just about worship. This is about people wanting to be church. This is about people wanting to connect with each other and be community. And that's when we start to look into the new worshiping community idea to say this is more than our more than a second service of Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. This is now a community of its own. And we got um, a really interesting steering team of people, some from the congregation, some that had been following our worship as we had been putting the materials online. Some people from there that were from Florida and South Carolina and Arizona, uh, California, and some were young adults who'd moved and tried to find a church and hadn't found a church with other 20 year olds in them and kind of went, oh, well, I don't want to give up church in my life because they believed again in justice, particularly the young adults. They believed that church was a place to work on justice issues. And they also felt like they were connected with people who cared about them mm -hmm. and they wanted that in their life. So when we started it, that became a, a, a really fun piece of it too, is that we began to get young adults that connected with us. That's sort of where it started. And then that's the next thing we did is the discernment to say, well, what do we have in common beyond, because not everybody was from Pleasantville or who had ever been in Pleasantville. So what do we have in common? And the three words that came to us were creativity, spirituality, and justice. And we wanted to make a space online for people who connected around those three things. Um, 
and it could be more one than another, that was okay. But just those were the words that people seemed to be describing as why they felt left out in the churches they were trying to find wherever they were. Um, That's great. I was going to ask you, or I was going to highlight your mission statement where creativity, spirituality, and justice meet. And so I think maybe a great way to proceed would just be to share something around each of those words uh, yeah. and what, what they mean and how you uh, offer and explore those areas of, of life. So that's been really fun to have a pretty open conversation about, okay, where is creativity a part of our spiritual journey? Um, for me, when I did my doctoral project, it was on creative writing as a spiritual practice. So it was a very natural way in for me to have conversations with people. And that, that was a piece of the beginning. And then we found artists who were drawing in, in relationship to their spiritual journey. And then musicians, and we've really found a lot of musicians, particularly when the pandemic happened, who were having trouble connecting with anybody and really wanted a place to belong and be who they were. So that became a, a major part of what we were doing too, is to say, um, in all these places, we see God in all these places. And the creativity lab that we put together the leadership of um, a musician, Ike Sturm is his name. He's a, a jazz spiritual bassist player. He's amazing. He and I put together this program called the Creativity Lab, where the whole point is that you come together because we are all created to be creative. And mm -hmm. also because most of us have this voice in our head that at some point told us we weren't good enough and we weren't allowed to play with creativity. And so we talk about creative process. We bring in people who explore different kinds of creativity, um, musicians, and we brought in a, a guy that does woodwork, amazing woodwork, artists, writers, and they talk about what they do, but they talk about their process. And at the same time, we do prompts to give people a chance. Okay, now you do it, or what do you see, or what do you hear? And then we talk together. And then we end with, you know, a kind of a closing moment of silence. And, and that's been just so fun. We've had like mm. 25 people from all over the country that mm. have been part of that. So that's the creativity piece is going in a lot of good directions. <laughs> it absolutely is. It, again, so rich material on your, on the site. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then the spirituality piece, one of the places we did that is with a podcast we called Everyday Spirituality. Mm -hmm. And we interview people about their spiritual journey. And, you know, we had somebody talk about running as a spiritual practice and making documentary films as a spiritual practice and some out of the box kind of ideas as well as maybe more traditional ideas. And that's been um, really life giving, I think, as well, giving people a chance to share and then other people are telling us they're trying some of the things that they hear, which has been really great. Um, that, and then also we make worship services and worship materials and share those as spiritual practices as well. And then the justice piece, we have several places where we're doing that. We did, um, when the murder of George Floyd happened, we did, started a book group about how to be an anti-racist, that book, which is amazing. And then Cast, which is also wonderful. And those were really rich conversations with people that felt comfortable asking their questions of each other and, and even giving like a life situation. Like this is something that's happening in my work world. How can I stand up when I wanna stand up and getting support from one another? So that was, that was really great. And then we've continued that with some fiction books to give people sort of the, the way in sideways to some of these difficult issues. And then the other place where we have really explored a lot is we have a podcast called Generation Hope. And that is, so full disclosure, the host of that is my daughter, Callie Bronkema. And she did some justice pieces early on during the pandemic. She interviewed some young adults. We felt like she was the right person to talk to these people who talked about what they were, one in a local community, um, how they were trying to make change and another in a um, 
organizing marches and that kind of thing. Um, and those were really well received and listened to. And so we encouraged her to consider, did she have other ideas? And she came to us with this idea for Generation Hope where she talked to young adults coming of age during the pandemic who were doing some amazing work. And she felt like she wanted their stories to be heard because on the news, all you saw were the young adults are the ones spreading the virus. And she was knowing people that were doing amazing things. And so, and then the next piece that she just started is talking about identity. And um, she, because she found out that some of the people that listen to her are from different generations. And she started to think, well, maybe this is a way for people who don't understand these initials and, and get upset about, well, why do people have to have these initials now? I don't mm -hmm. understand it. For them to actually hear people's stories right. and then maybe relate to them. So that's, that's really an exciting piece that just started in the last month. Wow, you must be so proud and, and what a contribution uh, she's making and um, reaching that uh, young generation and, and beyond. <laughs> and beyond, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, Debbie, one of the things that came to mind for me as I, you know, explored the website or we talked about connect.faith and is there ever a time when the community is together in, in either virtually or, or in, 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 uh, per, in person would be difficult because these folks are all over, <laughs> but, you, or is it um, follow as you, as you like, or is there a, a set time each week where you, you try to pull folks together in a streaming situation or something? Yeah, so there are different places and we do now we all know this word asynchronous and synchronous kind of thing <laughs> so the the synchronous meetings are like the creativity lab which is twice a month and then the book clubs which are once a month and then um we do asynchronous we put out every week a video and then other ways to connect um, writing prompts creative writing kind of things every week those go out in an email and then um, also we did this art gallery that has been really, really fun. It's amazing. Where we, yeah, we did that around a word. And so the first word was transformation and then hope. And now the one that we're compiling right now is growth. And we've gotten entries for that from all over the world, which has been really, really amazing, really great. And trying to define art broader than just painting too, or drawing or any of that, that people could take a photograph that they wanted to put in, people could write a poem, people could play music, but just saying any way that you wanna share what that word means to you has been really, really fun. And you look at that when you wanna look at that. Right. So right. It's, it's both and, you, you can yeah. see it anytime you want, but there are also places if you wanna connect face-to-face, -face, you can connect. Right, and so that, that becomes uh, both the, ch the uniqueness and the opportunity that Connect Not Faith represents, but also the challenge is how do they build community with one another? And right. is it largely through social media? Do you, do you connect with each other through Facebook, Twitter, whatever, other kinds of ways yeah. of connecting? Some of it is through social media, for sure, Facebook and Instagram and, and those things. We've been building those presents slowly, but building them. And then uh, Zoom it to do the other meetings where you can actually see people. Yeah, and YouTube. So some of the community building happens in, in talking to each other through those ways. We also, the steering team people in and of themselves and the planning people meet. And sometimes I think, you know, there, there's as many people involved in one of those places as there might be in some small churches. So that's kind of interesting too. Like it's not very defined, mm -hmm. but um, definitely people are connecting, which is really cool. And it was, the time was right in terms of, uh, this was well on its way, but the, through this pandemic, it's been a life-giving source for resource for a lot of people, including yourself probably to have this outreach and yeah. and be able to touch people in ways that you couldn't uh, physically in, in the building and so on. Yeah, I mean, we learned some lessons because we did used to come together to film before the pandemic and those were fun weekends. We did that twice and, um, and the plan was we were gonna do it three times a year. 
and now we're doing everything differently like everybody but um those the sense that we could gather around something and then share it larger was fun but now at this point the sense that we don't need to be together to have community is really great and the lessons that we learned from when we were together were very helpful like um one of our young adults who's an artist said i don't want to feel like i'm not there and there's something happening I want to feel like you're talking to me. I want mm -hmm. you to, I want it to be digital first. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to, to look at what you're doing that way. And, and that was really a helpful piece of information to everything that we did going Excellent. forward. From there. Excellent. And so that, you know, um, it brings me to think about the Pleasantville Presbyterian Church, which is of course given birth to this and, and your ministry there has grown into this uh, new opportunity. Um, how has Connect.Faith, has it, has it detracted from the life of uh, PPC or is it in, enriched uh, life right. at, at BPNC, PP, PPC? <laughs> PPC, yeah, I would say definitely enriched. I mean, in, in some really profound ways because of the pandemic, because we were, we were ready on day one, knowing right. how to do worship and what to do and how to get it out there right away, which was really helpful. And we had recorded a lot of music because that's one of the things people didn't have. And we had all of that. So mm -hmm. that really helped us um, be able to, to move forward. Then uh, Evan Klosser was also part of it from the beginning and he was our pianist organist. So he knew how to record music and send it in and play hymns for us and do special music. All of that because he was techie yeah. We were really very fortunate to be really ahead of the curve. And so people that didn't know very much about Connect.Faith, because the leaders all knew of the church, but not everybody would know that much about it, now know a lot more and are really grateful. And then it taught us how to do these conversations. You know, how do you build community on conversation? How do you figure out how to talk and leave space for other people? You know, the mutual invitation model is what we've been practicing on connect.faith beforehand. And that was really helpful to PPC when we started to do Bible studies. And then they also now participate. I think I counted one time about 100 people that are part of Pleasantville are pretty active in receiving and opening and paying attention to content or doing something with connect.faith. So nice. Yeah, and yet I wanted to clarify that um, it yes it emerged from and and is rooted in PBC, but it has Connect on Faith is reaching uh, new people as well. So there's some overlap, obviously, but right, it is but really no, its own. It's definitely is its own thing. Yeah, we we are reaching people from all over the world um, in some ways and in really active ways from all over the country. We have somebody from Canada, too, that's a really active participant. Hey. So, yeah, it's a pretty... Where in Canada? Um, south of Toronto. Okay. Of Toronto. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. I, I grew up in Canada. So it's Did true. you really? Yeah, see, yeah. I don't, know, I don't yeah. know enough. I just can picture where she showed me on the map. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Terrific. Hey, one thing I noticed that I really thought was cool, given, you know, we've watched, all watched a lot of... Uh, streaming Netflix and uh, Prime and whatnot over the pandemic. I like the way you put it in seasons, season one, season yeah. two, season three. That was, I thought that was a clever uh, little uh, way to introduce some um, <laughs> people to, as they're, you know, checking things out and, oh, we'll go back to the pilot episode. And <laughs> <laughs> it is, it was kind of fun to do it that way. And it, yeah. it has, that has been attractive to some people. I have sure. heard from people that they watch through a season. Yeah. Um, to to yeah. find what they were looking for so that, that's terrific well debbie as we head towards sort of wrapping up um i want folks to know that you are going to be our preacher at our <laughs> presbytery meeting on tuesday if folks watch this before tuesday um you can learn more and even some of that music uh, will be featured that you said uh, yeah. you you're that comes out of connect up faith and will will be featured in the in the worship yeah. service at, at Presbytery. And so thank you for being okay. willing to share with us there and share your insights and 
um, uh, with all of us. Any word you would offer to uh, folks sitting at home or watching this and whether it's a pastor, an elder leader in a church or a lay person, um, an encouragement to try something new and, and creative uh, in their context. I would say that, that my congregation is just wonderful about being open to creativity, which is great. Um, but it, some of it came just from listening to who it is that we couldn't meet in the traditional way. And where can you hear from that person? I mean, for me, it happened that people were talking to me, like calling me on the phone and telling me their stories and coming in my office even and telling me. Um, so who's, who's talking and, mm. and what are they telling you about where they need to be met that, that the church isn't, isn't there yet, you know? Exactly. And has Hudson River Presbytery been helpful to you? How could we be more helpful? And, right. and um, uh, well, ask in your context first, and then I'll offer some thoughts around how we want to be helpful to others uh, as we move forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Deb McCowark has been a, a really great support and resource for me um, and, and helpful in just brainstorming and ideas and things like that. Um, the Presbytery, we applied for and received a legacy grant, which was super helpful because you also have to have matching funds to get grants from the denomination. Right. So that was a helpful beginning for us, um, for sure. For sure. And that I'm very grateful for that because we were doing things with volunteers that eventually we couldn't do with volunteers. We, we were running out of the ability to sponsor it as an outreach because it was just yeah. growing faster than, than we could keep up with it. So, Well, we do have to admit we didn't really have a structure in place to help you get started as a presbytery, did we? No, for, for me, I knew about legacy grants. And so I applied through the legacy grant program but that wasn't something that um anybody told me about or <laughs> you know that was just i was fortunate because i knew that legacy grants existed so i went to the legacy grant training and then could do it that way but yeah there wasn't a thing that said if you're a new worshiping community these are the three steps you need to take yeah and and that's exactly what we're working on debbie and, and for folks that are thinking of um, exploring new worshiping communities is we have a team from council working on um, how to organize so that going forward if a, someone does have a vision or an idea or a congregation wants to try something new we, we do have a place and, and resources for you to go to to say yeah these are the steps to get help you get started and uh, your experience will be a big help in that as we as we go forward. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Debbie, for this time we've had together and I hope folks uh, uh, find this helpful and we'll just pray for some wonderful new creative ideas to, to emerge in, in the years ahead as we move into this new normal post-pandemic and we've all learned things about Church Without Walls. I was uh, right. in New Haven, Connecticut last night for our son was uh, doing a concert and there's two uh, congregational churches on the green there um, and one of them had the banner the the building is closed but the church is open yes. and I've liked that heard it before but I just saw it again last night that phrase that reminds us all that we've learned a lot through this pandemic how to be the church beyond the walls of the building and, and connect dot faith is just a stunning example of that so oh, thank you thank you so much and uh, god bless you and your ministry and we'll see you on Tuesday at Presbytery sounds great thanks for all having right. me Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay.